first off, congrats to Rutgers on on, uh, on their win. Um, and I thought the way that they played, I, I thought, yeah, I thought they deserved when I thought they made um, plays down the stretch, um, just some toughness plays. And, Offensively and defensively, that they needed to do. Um, you know, I thought, I thought Steve Pike would completely outcoach me tonight. He coached circles around me tonight, and um, yeah, we got outcoached. And I got to put our guys in a better position to be successful. If we want to win a game like this, um, so yeah, it's disappointing that we lose it, right? Because we had a 19-point lead in the second half. Um, but, you know, we're back to work tomorrow, get back to practice, clean up what we need to clean up, and get ready for our next game. Like if Jalen didn't attempt a shot in the second half, what did they do differently that made things so difficult for him? Uh, they usually sent two at the ball a lot of times. Um, really doubled him, tried to get the ball out of his hands, and um, forced other guys to try and beat us, or try and beat them. And You know, we had opportunities. You, you can't, but... You know, Seth goes 0 for 11 from three. Funk goes 1 for 7. Miles goes 0 for 1. It's three of your better shooters right there that, uh, you know, 1 for 19, right? And they're shooting open shots. So um, hats off to them, right? We needed to adjust and go to something different. Um, but, you know, it's so like I said, I got out, coach. Mike, as, as narrow as this window is getting for your team with all the seniors, are you worried about them bouncing back after something like this? Because obviously it seemed like it's a very difficult one to, to, to kind of take. Nope, not really. No. Like, the season's not over. Okay. We got a game on Wednesday. Right? If this was the last game of our season, if, like, they had to take their jersey off and go home after tonight, they'd probably feel a little bit different. Um, but I mean, we got a lot of games left. We got a lot of games left to play. Like I said it's disappointing because we you know, we had a chance to win it. We needed to make the right plays throughout the game to win it, and we didn't do that. Um, but I got to help them do it. I got to help them do it. I didn't help them tonight. Mike, did, did you feel like there were missed opportunities to to build even when you were at plus nineteen or in the, in the first half you were at plus fifteen, sixteen? Um, did you feel like there were missed opportunities there as well to, to kind of build and maybe put them away earlier in the game? Yeah, definitely. Um, we let go of the rope a few times when, when we had opportunities. Um, you know, I, I just thought, like, when you build leads, um, you have to kind of stay with what got you there. So you got to hit singles. Yeah, hit singles. I felt like we went for the home run way too many times way too many times instead of just being simple, right? And that's what we talked about at halftime. We gave them that run at the end, 7-0 run at the end of the half um, that goes from 17 to 10, and it gives them a little bit of confidence, right? That's all you need. I've been talking about confidence for two and a half weeks. That's all you need. College basketball is a little bit of confidence. They were fired up. We came out and started the half great. But then we let our foot off the road. Yeah, we let we let our foot off the gas. We let go of the rope. We didn't do the things that got us that lead. So um, little plays that like they don't seem that like they were big, but like we give them a bucket, and then they get a free throw rebound, right? Like we gave them more chances when that like maybe you close the door, like maybe you foul and they they shoot the free throw and miss it, and that like helps close the door. Right, we left the door open too many times. Even when we weren't scoring the basketball, we couldn't come up with timely stops. They would get long offensive rebounds, or they'd hit timely. Like they hit every timely basket that they needed to make, and we missed a lot of them. But you know, it was because of the things that we did early in the game. Mike, uh, Seth, uh, you know, really struggled today at the shooting. And when, when you talk about confidence, it seems like he usually doesn't lack for it. What could you attribute this outing uh, for him tonight to? He shot 16 shots and missed them all. I don't know. I mean, there's no, like, science to it. Um, yeah, I thought he was rushing a little bit. I thought he was a little too hyped. 
um, to play this game. I kept telling him, hey, take a deep breath, man. Settle down. Like, it's okay. Um, but, man, I, you know, some of them were quick, but a lot of those he's taken throughout the year, he's made. Um, it just wasn't his night tonight. Coach, two quick questions for you. Number one, you know, this this is the second time you played Rutgers in a span of 30-plus days. You dropped both of the games, two of them. What does it show about the intensity and the competition Rutgers has given you this season in, in those two matchups? Yeah, I mean, they're one of the best defensive teams in the country, and we haven't, we haven't proven to be able to score on them effectively in two games. We had 45 last game. We had 56 in this one. Um, you know, I, I thought there were things that we needed to do better. We needed to do attack better. They're really good on the first side, uh, but you got to move them, move them, move them to get them on the second side. We got to play off of attacking closeouts. We got to move a little more, but they make it tough on you because they stay out on the perimeter, so they don't give you those kickouts. So you got to play through some different people at times. And I didn't think we did that. I thought we relied too much on the three instead of trying to attack the rim. And again, you talked about things to fix going forward. To end the game, you, you you didn't score one basket over a period of nine minutes or so. What's the goal to fix that issue specifically for with Northwestern and Maryland left on the regular season? Yeah, um, I mean, you know Northwestern's a good defensive team. Also, um, we only scored seven the whole second half. So, like the nine minutes was one is about indicative of how the second half was going. Um, like I said, I got out coach. I, I need to help those guys. I need to be better, put them in better positions to do some things um, with how they were playing the ball screens with some of the stuff we were going to. But a lot of stuff we go to, you know, outside the picket, they were taking the ball out of his hands. The other guys weren't going, right? And so you got to rely on something. So you got to go back to something. And, uh, you know, I didn't help them the best, in the, in the best way for them to be successful. And, like, you know, I'll, I'll, It'll be, it'll be a sleepless night. It'll be a sleepless night. I know that much. Mike, uh, Cam said he thought guys' spirits were down in the second half. Did you notice that? And how much an impact do you think that could have had? I, you know what? It, it um, that which is which is crazy because you look, we led the game for 32 minutes and 30 seconds. I don't know what you're down about. That means we're playing through our offense. We're not playing through defense. We're not playing through stops. Um, and, you know, if guys are getting down because they're not making shots, and that's that's something that we've been preaching all year, uh, we're winning the game. At some point in time, like it becomes winning time. It becomes I got to step up and make a play at that point in time. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, I didn't notice it, but you know, I'm I'm trying to be as positive as possible with our group. You know, that, so they're ready to play. Um, you know, this is, I told Steve and Dick on the radio, like, we've sucked when people have come to games. We've sucked. I don't know whether it's like we're too amped up to play or we're too juiced to play, but or maybe we're reading press clippings of how important this game was instead of really focusing on one game. It's one game. At the end of the day, it's one game. Like, this wasn't an elimination game. This wasn't like, hey, we're going to play this game, and if, if you guys get beat, the floor is going to open, and you're going to fall through it, and you're done. Like, no, it's one game. We've lost. We lost 12 times this year, right? Like, pick yourself up and go play the next game. That's it, right? This game, yeah, it's important because it was the game that we were playing, uh, but no game is more important than the other. And, you know, we got to come back and get, and get back to practice and work on some things and be better and go play Northwestern. And that's one game. And that's one game, and that's it. So, um, you know, maybe our minds weren't in the right place coming into this. Maybe we were too hype or too jacked up. But um, we got to finish the game the right way, man. Can't can't give up 19-point lead in the second half. Two more, Andre, and then Mark. Yeah, Coach, what goes into the decision to keep a player like Lundy in despite his shooting struggles down the stretch? He's leading the Big Ten at three-point percentage. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him. Um, you know, the shot's not falling, but, um, you know, maybe there is the one that goes in. Like, that's what we're going to lean on. He's a guy, he's carried us. He's been consistent all season, and he's carried us. I'm going to ride those guys. I'm going to go with them until the wheels fall off. And um, 
tonight wasn't his night. Tonight wasn't his night. Um, but they were also like kick out threes. It wasn't like I was just running set after set for him. Like, hey man, we're gonna get Seth the ball. We're gonna do this and that. No, they were doubling. Ball was just getting swung to him. He kept finding him. He just kept missing it. I'm okay with that. He was he was taking good shots for the most part. Uh, Pick has seen every type type of defense you could imagine this year. Uh, was there something Rutgers was doing unique in the second half? Because the the, thing, the, the stat that really pops out zero shots for him seems you know like kind of mind blowing after what we've seen from him all year. Uh, they just made him pass. Right? They were going to say you're not going to beat us. We're going to put two people on the basketball aggressive trap and make you pass it. And like. I thought a couple of times where, yeah, he might have had opportunities to go score when he caught the ball deep into the paint before the double team came, but they tried to get to him before he got there. They tried to double on the perimeter and force him to pass. And, uh, you know, maybe some of those, like like I said, it ended up in a swing, swing shot. Instead of a swing, a swing, attack a closeout. Maybe we get a layup. Maybe we get a kick out. Maybe we get a second drive. We didn't get enough of that. We didn't get enough second attacks. They were unbelievably defensively on the first side. But every defense in America, I don't care if it's the Celtics, the Sixers, or the Nuggets, nobody can guard multiple sides if you keep swinging, if you keep moving, and keep attacking. Right? And that's like, as a coach, you're trying to preach that. You're trying to preach that, but sometimes you don't get it. Right? Like, that's okay. And we'll go back and we'll work on this because Northwestern's going to do the same kind of thing. They're going to hard hedge ball screens. They're going to make it tough on you. They're going to make you rotate. They're going to make you swing it. And it's either that extra pass shot or it's that extra pass attack and make the right play. We didn't attack and make the right play. But that's, that's on the coach, man. I'll be better. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it.